Hi everyone, thank you so much for stopping by my video. I'm super excited but also very nervous, so just please bear with me here. I want to be able to explain to you what I would like to share with you over the next three videos, not back to back, but just all together for the holiday gift giving uh, art making season 2023. I've never done this before, so okay. I want to be able to uh, do some watercolor, real time watercolor art videos just watercoloring in my own art and then turning that into a card. So these are four and a half by six inches and they are the perfect size card fronts for these larger size pre-made craft recollections brand. That's a Michaels brand uh, craft cardstock card and it comes with the matching envelope and you can also buy the smaller set which I will be doing um, a separate video on the smaller size but these are really economical and if you're selling them you can make your money back really quickly so using the michaels brand artist loft cotton watercolor paper it's 140 pound cold press and you can use both sides i believe this is the side facing up i would brag about this paper more often if it wasn't so expensive for a store brand but it is what it is and um yeah so i'm shooting for three videos and they're going to be in real time so they will be longer just know that but i'll take you through everything i already recorded the inking or pen work video of this little guy here i use my tombow pens and also the micron 01 i usually use the 03 and the 05 and then the micron 01 for details he's super simple and i would love to share with you all of this including the actual card making the adhesive all that good stuff oh speaking of adhesive whenever i see these at my local dollar tree i pick them up very very strong adhesive for a dollar 25 you can't really beat it so this first video will be the longest because i just wanted to go over the materials the watercolors everything and anything i have here white knights paul rubens who knows what else <laughs> so now i can go ahead and have a seat and i can begin okay I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and pre-mixed some Violet Mist and some Blue Shadow. Both colors are from White Nights, and that's going to be my background color. I know a lot of artists like to go from light to dark. I'm going to do a little bit of wet on to dry and also blend out wet on to wet and all that good stuff. <laughs> and I'll press pause. In all of these videos, if I see that what I'm doing is getting a little too repetitious, this violet mist color is absolutely stunning and it granulates so beautifully. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? The brush I'm using is from Artegria. It's their size 2, if you can believe it, <laughs> matte brush. And I'm okay if I leave a little bit of white space in between where I'm adding the paint and my snowman. But I do want to be careful around here. This is the first time I'm attempting a video series like this and I really, really want to follow through. Not just for you guys, but also for me, for my own, you know, like artistic accountability. Can Is that a thing? <laughs> just dipping the tip of my brush into water doing this on purpose because yes <laughs> and I'm just taking advantage of the quiet time that I have before my son comes home so trying to fill up as much area as possible leaving these areas for a smaller brush they would naturally be darker so I'm okay with leaving that open for right now all right so you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to do I am so tempted to bring in some pink or something in here maybe some magenta oh god I can't help myself <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing just scooping in some it's called Violet Rose or Rose Magenta. Oh my lord. Look at that, you guys. So 
so pretty. All right, let me go ahead and finish this up, okay? You guys know what I'm doing. And I will be right back. I just wanted to show you the brush that I'm using for these very tight spots right here. It's the number eight Van Gogh. It's called Selected Filament. It came in a three pack. I think it's just a very nice, very super pointy round brush. And it lets me get in there with that round pointy tip with precision and I can then bring the color out. It holds a lot of water and paint in the belly. So I'm able to get in here and clean up all of these hard edges very nicely. Okay, so I'm beginning to finish up here. And a little bit of color did get into some areas, like the scarf right there, but I'm not too worried about that. What I would like to do is sprinkle a little bit of a, not sprinkle, <laughs> spray a fine mist, excuse me, a fine mist over the background, covering up the snowman just so I can get that nice effect. And I would like to also experiment with salt, but I don't have any of that coarse salt. I only have regular cooking salt, so I don't know how far that'll take me, but I just wanna slather this color on everywhere. <laughs> so I apologize if I am continuing to just work this whole area actually a pretty good way of overworking your paper, but I guess I just can't help it. I did want to show you guys everything. All right, let me get my spray bottle. Okay, so I'm going to just take a damp Q-tip and just do this all over the place until I have no idea until I <laughs> until I'm happy took me to get into water never done this before some of the spraying got into the hat but that's fine I don't mind Drying, drying the Q-tip just took off the moisture, so I think this is better. This is all new to me. Never done this before, but I have seen some of my favorite mixed media artists use Q-tips to remove color, even do bo bouquet effects. So... I don't know, this is definitely very soft. Being a bit more confident now and taking a bit more. It's like the perfect little fluffy background. And if I kind of do a little bit of that, I could probably remove even more if I wanted to. All right, so you guys get the gist. I just, again, want to keep sharing in real time so you guys can see the technique. I didn't share the actual spring because I'm going to be honest. I want to try to keep this area as clean as possible. But we'll see how long that lasts. I flipped it over. You know, that's not bad at all. Okay, so that is the end result of all the Q-tipping I did. I'm gonna go ahead and use my 
excuse the reach my heating tool okay i'll be right back okay okay i'm back it's been about a half hour and that's because the landscaping company that's been working on the project grounds all day long they came around i guess to do a once over and then they're gone so we are good i'm gonna grab a little bit of let's see here uh, paint's great sounds good to me whatever i can grab i'll just grab i think that is chorus paints gray yeah so i'll go ahead and use that as the color for our snowman here and a little bit goes a long way and the same concept moving from dark to light I'm going to try to keep some areas free of color on purpose just to see how it looks. I can always come back and add more if I don't like it in the end. But let's see what happens. This area here in the front will be the lightest. And you can see I added some shading into his button smile and eyes. It's a little creepy actually <laughs> that's actually just done with um, with a pencil just to see how it looks and I'm actually okay with that so yeah I'm using a velvet touch number four for the blending hands are a bit shaky there going right over the buttons because the buttons will be a darker color and then this is a Windsor and Newton Cotman round number four <clears throat> excuse me yeah I do like leaving these little spots of no color and then I I guess I will add a little bit right here and then just kind of scooch my brush all the way up I'm using the Dollar Tree brand masking tape and I have good faith in this tape okay so this area back here would be the darkest again I'm going right over everything except the nose so I double checked on the colors that I used for the background and it was indeed um, a dark blue shadow for the blue, that was that PBK11 and PB156. It is Quin Violet Rose, Quinacridone Violet Rose, which is a PV19, and then the Violet Mist, it's gorgeous. PB29, PR187, and PG17. So I was almost right about the Violet Rose. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and begin to work on the hat. And I'm gonna mix some ivory black with whatever I have left here of the core Payne's Gray. All right, and same concept, dark to light. Okay, <laughs> it's uh, it's turning out to be really different and I like it. I really do, okay.
Okay. I think that's looking good so far. Very good, very good. Let's take care of the scarf. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I really am. Um, okay, the scarf color, I need to paint it green because this green here, I went ahead and just blended two colors together in a half pan from White Nights. It's whatever I had left over of some Ergazan Yellow, which is a PY129 and Cobalt Blue, PB28. And you guys, this green is just, look. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely stunning. I'm assuming that Ergaz and Yellow must be their version of a green gold. That is just so beautiful. I'm going to take some of this color over here and pull it out as well. Some of this has been painted in from the background color and I'm okay with that. Usually I would be, like Tim Holt says, freaking my freak. <laughs> I would be freaking my freak about it, but I'm gonna just chill. Leaving these spaces of untouched paper, you know, no color added, so it just, my gosh, what a difference. And the same thing right here, just grab and pull down just a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And because I used a granulating blue to mix with it, I can see a little bit of that separation happening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't mean to just be all loud about it, but oh, I really want to do this, you guys. I really, really want to share this way. Oh my goodness. Okay. Ugh. Okay, let's use red because Santa Claus, hello. <laughs> all right, so just getting whatever I got here. What is this? Permanent Scarlet by Core? Okay, let's use that. <laughs> Let's use that. A little bit of that, I'm sure, goes a long way. This is the first time I'm using this color in art. And let's start right here in the corner. Very sparingly. I am so sorry, you guys. Let me grab a drink of water before I sound like a toad. Oh my gosh, apologies. Okay, truly, I am just <laughs> so embarrassed by that. But I'm gonna keep going, so please be nice. All right, you can see I went ahead and did that little patch of fabric and using the same color for this area here of his hat. I already did the detail work beforehand with the pen, which is something that I absolutely love to see. It does more than half the work for you. And you also know where to put your deeper values too. That's what I'm learning, little by little. I still don't know what color I'm going to paint that area there. As you can see, I'm limited. Hello, Mr. Bert. One second, guys. That is Bert from Bert and Ernie. Those are my two kittens. Give me one second, please. Okay, I thought he wanted cuddles, but I guess he doesn't. All right, so I pulled out some Van Dyke Brown from Paul Rubens. It's one of my favorite Van Dyke Brown colors. It's just more black leaning and it's mass tone and it is just gorgeous. And I only 
only have a little bit of it left too. Whatever I have, it, whatever I have in my half pan is what I have left. And if I want to get it, I'm gonna have to buy those little that set with the five ml tubes. And I don't want to do that. So, okay. So I got just all these little nooks and crannies showing all these highlights. Right. That's the best way to describe all these little highlights peeking through because I didn't add, didn't cover everything with color. I guess I'm just excited, so. <laughs> Grabbing some permanent orange from the same set. Some of that permanent scarlet to warm it up. Okay, and let's take care of the nose. So I guess this is probably a good example of drawing something that might look really detailed you know maybe even a little intimidating to color but look just super simple one or two layers of color and that's just about it and I have a feeling that when I add one more darker layer of that Payne's Gray by itself again, I think it's going to really make it pop. But let's go ahead and seal in the eyes. I'll just use some ivory black. His eyes are definitely very dark. <laughs> okay same concept I didn't fill in every single little coal chunk in there let me grab some more of that Payne's gray by itself and oh let me just look over I do want to darken the hat area so let me go back to that real quickly using the side belly of the brush too also helps Oh, look at that texture. Okay. Hello. <laughs> this area of the hat, I do want it to be just a little bit darker. So I'll bring out the color a little bit more. just see where the dark area is right here I wanted to make it real dark back there and kind of match right here <clears throat> okay back to oh you know what though that is probably still wet so let me chill for a second <laughs> let me take care of this area here first so I obviously have commitment issues. <laughs> so I'm avoiding that right there for whatever reason, but I did add a little bit of the PGA green that I ordered from White Knights to the pre-mixed Ergazin and Cobalt Blue mixture. And that's what I'm using right there just to darken it up. Just a smidge. I don't want to lose what I have going here, but I do want to have a little bit of darker value. <clears throat> I think I'm just nervous because normally I would not be all oh, hemming and hawing over here, having a fit. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. 
and this area right here. I could always do gold. That's always an option. Nah, the gold I have isn't really all that great. It'll get all chunky. Okay, so I added a little bit of, um, just went in with my brush here with damp, my damp brush, geez, sorry, um, and went around and I gave him some dark circles. So maybe he hasn't slept in a while. <laughs> so that is the darkest value of Payne's Gray I can get. And now I'm going to very carefully able to do it. I'm actually going to grab just a smidge right here. I'm going to push that down and then I'm going to add just a little bit right underneath his nose just to give him a bit of shading. Ooh, man. a little bit geez okay that's all right I still got control if I work quickly enough I don't want this to turn into a heavy and this is not wrong either but I have a very heavy hand and it's very I love it love 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 this also I love. Two totally different styles and I want to try to... Sorry guys, I felt a coughing fit coming on so I apologize. I don't know why this is happening but let's go ahead and finish him up. This time I really want to just keep certain area is really dark. See like down here. We can keep this area a bit more darker right here. So when you turn your paper sideways, you're able to, I don't know, just it's easier for me to do this. When I turn my paper all over the place, there's a way to explain it, and as usual, I don't know how. So let's just <laughs> let my, what I'm doing here, do the talking. do away with the areas that I left as a highlight. I really like seeing them. And then we can also just add a little bit underneath each button. here in this brush I'll just loosen it up with a little bit of water push it back that way push it to the side and then just do it like that get a little bit of texture okay that's it. That is it. I almost feel like I can deepen the red a little bit. 
Okay, so I did. I just added these two colors here, mixed these two colors together. The Van Zyke Brown with whatever I have left there of the permanent red. Sorry, permanent scarlet. Oh, that's lovely. That is just so nice. Same thing for right here. Just a lot of repetition, really. But I guess I wanted to show you guys every step as best as possible because I know that that's helpful to me. And I'm certainly no expert, you know? But that right there, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> the nose even came out good the first time around. I don't even think it needs anything. And I'm still avoiding <laughs> that area there in the scarf. Okay, it's been decided. <laughs> Ultramarine Blue Dark from Zayla Rowney with a smidge, and I mean just a little smidge, of the Windsor & Newton Professional Range Indigo. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Oh man, that is good stuff. Not even gonna bother doing anything fancy here, just... Wow, okay, so I think we are done. I guess I can just add one more coat <laughs> of the Van Dyke Brown. I think I can still pull some right here by itself. So just quickly, one, two, and three. Just enough to see that there's a bit of a contrast. I think I lost the little button marks with the pen, but I can always put those back in. Yeah, we're definitely done. We are. I got to admit, and this is just my taste, the eyes are a little too dark for me. But next time I'll make them lighter. Let's go ahead and get the adhesive and we can finish up. Okay, so I found an already opened double-sided tape. And the craft mat that you see here is also from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to buy a few more. This is just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, you guys. I'm so glad that I am sharing this with you if you are still watching. Thank you. <laughs> I hope that what I share with you, oh my gosh, that is amazing. Oh, by the way, I did uh, come in with this uh, Artex colored pencil, the white one, and it just added a few more little dots. I don't know where I put the charcoal pencil for the life of me. It would have been much nicer, but I got that. And so here we have our card front. Oh, look at that, see? I used, I recycled, no shame in that. Honestly, I wasn't planning to show you that, but I guess I forgot. <laughs> I ain't even gonna fake. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, I know, I agree, Bert, I agree. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and, and please don't judge, please don't judge. I know it's not a perfectly perfect background, but let me go ahead and add the tape. Okay, and the taping there is not attractive whatsoever, but that's okay. Let me actually stand up and do this. Wow.
You don't get that at the grocery store. <laughs> I am feeling really good about this, you guys. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I actually did it. Wow, this is amazing. This feels amazing. I feel accomplished. I feel like, yeah, yeah. What I didn't think about, and I don't think if I'm, I don't think I mentioned this, I did actually cut out the strip. I wanted to add the sentiment, hand lettered sentiment, but I didn't, I would be blocking all of this no matter what, because he's right in the middle. But I would have actually used some foam, foam excuse me, adhesive, and it's dimensional, and it would have popped things up, and yeah, that's all right though. I can always add something on the inside, but um, yeah. Uh, I can always, no, I'm not going to write anything out. Okay, so <laughs> until I make up my mind, this is how it's going to stay. If you do see a different picture, um, you know, I added something to it as far as lettering or maybe on the inside, you'll see it in the community tab. And I think I'm going to end it here. I think I've shared everything with you and this is how it looks like up close. And the most important thing for me is that I shared in real time and with natural lighting because it is now 307 this is wonderful because my son comes home within the hour and I'm gonna begin dinner and I did my crafting for the day I just feel so good I don't mean to hang on to the video it's just this is really good all right guys I'll come back in a couple days with video number two if I can do them back to back then I will but I'm shooting for three so now there's two all right. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.